Versa has been around since the 1950s. In fact, the Italian engineers that started the company had a background with Beretta and moved to Argentina and began to make the Bursa Firearm Company. Also worked with the Ballister Molina Company, which I own a, one of the Ballister Molina 45s. Great little pistol. Bursa put out a lot of you know pretty popular firearms down in the South American countries, and but not until the Bursa Thunder. And here I have one of the Bursa Thunder 380s, and this is their concealed carry model. Did Bursa really start gaining a lot of popularity here in the U.S.? In fact, this pistol and obviously many that are similar to this variations have been very popular for concealed carry holders, especially people that aren't really gun people. But to be honest with you, I've done a number of reviews on the Thunder 380, and it's just a really nice pistol for the money. Under 300 bucks, uh, it's hard to pass up. But today we're going to look at Bursa's first polymer striker-fired pistol. Obviously, it took a little while for them to come on to the polymer frame market. This is the BP. 9 cc which stands for bursa polymer 9 millimeter concealed carry it comes in 9 millimeter which this one is 9 millimeter it also comes in a 40 smith and wesson and a 380 of course i'm going to go ahead and we'll safety check to make sure the gun isn't loaded which it is eight and one with nine millimeter eight and one with 380 seven and one with 40. this is the matte black version uh, it also comes with an od green frame with a black slide and then it comes with a nickel slide with a black frame. So there are three different options. Now the first thing you're going to notice is how thin this pistol is. In fact, when you grip the pistol, it's just incredibly ergonomic and thin in the hand, which makes it really excellent for concealed carry. It's only 0.94 inches in width. So it's very similar, obviously, with appearance to your Glock. Uh, it does come back with a nice beaver tail, which really makes this excellent in the hand. The uh, texturing on the grip is right here with this laser etching, very nice panels, and then we have these uh, ribs that are on the front and back strap of the grip. What I really like are these little finger pads right here, and this really gives you a place to put your finger and to remember to put your finger uh, when you're not shooting the gun uh, when you have your finger in the trigger guard. It's really important to keep that finger out of the trigger guard when you're not shooting. I really like these small little finger pads. Uh, once you're finished shooting, your finger can naturally go right here. It'll give you good muscle memory to get your finger out of the trigger and right on these little pads. Uh, it has it on both sides, so you know whether you're right or left-handed. Here we have a nice accessory rail on the front, ample room in the trigger guard. It's just a really nice feeling gun. You can see the thinness right here. Very easy to grip. In fact, uh, my 16-year-old uh, son was shooting this, really enjoyed it. And then my 11-year-old son, he hasn't shot this yet, but when he was gripping it, he said, man, I just love the way that feels. So this is going to lend itself to smaller-handed shooters, female shooters. Of course, it's, it is thin. But because of the extension of the grip, you can really get a full grip on this pistol. And then, of course, with the magazine inserted, it even gives you a little extra which goes to our magazine release. Uh, we have the magazine releases here and it's also ambidextrous. It does have a protective ridge that rides right up here next to the release. And while that's nice, it keeps you from accidentally uh, dropping your magazine, it's also a little bit tough to get around and to hit. But once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Another thing, you can take your trigger finger and hit the magazine release here. As you can see, the magazines come out extremely well full or empty. They are a steel body with a polymer base plate. Again, these hold 8 and 1. The magwell is beveled and that's going to allow you to really get your magazines into the grip really fast, uh, even when you're coming in at different angles. It does have a magazine disconnect safety, so with the magazine out of the gun, you're not going to get any action in the trigger. With the magazine in, you can fire it. Magazine comes out really fast, but it does have a magazine disconnect safety. So we're going to double check, make sure the gun's unloaded. Uh, once that magazine has come out, there's no firing this pistol. I really like that feature of being able to fire it with a round in the chamber without the magazine, but it is what it is. Now I've got to insert the magazine to demonstrate the trigger safety. Uh, right here you have a safety, this ledge that 
rides right at the back of the frame. And this is going to keep it from inadvertently firing. You bring your finger down here and you can see that the pivot is now working. And this is going to allow you to fire the pistol like so. Of course, inside is also a firing pin safety. I'm going to insert a dummy round and I'm going to show you the loaded chamber indicator. Here you can see right at the top, it does rise up just a touch. Uh, that's visual and it's tactile. So even in low light situations, you can reach up here and realize that the chamber is loaded. It does have an external safety right here. This is more for storage. If you want to put your gun away and keep it from being fired, the ability to fire this gun, you just turn it and this locks the gun into place. Definitely, I would not recommend keeping that if you're actively carrying this gun or using it for home defense. I'm not a big fan. This is going to go in my junk drawer. The overall fit and finish of the slide, though, is very nice. Uh, it has really nice scalloped serrations. Very easy to grab hold of, but yet not too sharp. The muzzle is rounded off, and that's going to make it easier to insert into holsters. Uh, it is somewhat blocked off a little bit, very Glock-esque. You have your standard back slide plate. Then we see that we have three dot sights. One of the things I really like about these sights is that the two rear sights are really small. And then you have your large front sight, which is larger than the two in the rear. And this is going to really allow for better target acquisition, really close up quick shots. You're not going to get confused knowing which dot is which. Sometimes on guns you can get it split and you're really searching for that front sight. This is going to help you to be able to get that front sight when you need to. And with that being said, they're pretty high profile. They're not just down on the frame, hard to see. So this will really lead to good accuracy. And that's one of the things that I was really pleased about with this pistol, is how accurate it was. Now another good thing about these sights is that you can use Glock rear sights for the back. So any aftermarket rear sight for Glock or Glock factory sights you can replace. And the front sight interchanges with the SIG number 8 sights. So that's going to give you a lot of aftermarket choices for your sight system. The Bursa BP9 is really easy to shoot. It's 9mm. It's a thin grip. But it just stays on target really well. One of the things that I really like about this trigger is that it's super uh, smooth. In fact, it's one of the best triggers I've shot, uh, especially one of these smaller guns, uh, striker fire. Uh, it's really quick. So I'm going to just show you the trigger. We're going to go ahead and make sure the gun is unloaded. Even though we have the magazine in, we're going to have to leave it in because of the uh, magazine disconnect. Now this trigger, according to Bursa, is called the short reset double action only trigger. You have your initial take up right here. This is your pre-travel. And it's at one pound, eight ounces. It's really light, really thin. And you come against a little bit of a wall. Now what's going to happen is you're going to disconnect your, your trigger safety. You're going to hear it right there. That's really easy. Then there is a three pound, 10 ounce trigger pull. And it is super clean, nice break. Your reset is about an eighth of an inch. Click, you're ready to go again. In fact, if you're not careful when firing this, you can inadvertently fire again because that reset is so quick. Here I'm going to give you a little bit of a closer look. One and a half pound pre-travel. Then we have, you can hear the safety disconnecting. That is not slop, it's meant to be. And then we have a clean, crisp break. I think you're going to find that out on the range, you're going to really love the way this pistol shoots. Now I will say, because that trigger has such a nice trigger pull, you're really going to need to have a holster on this gun if you're carrying concealed. Don't slip this in your pocket because it's just too easy. Uh, even with the Glocks, even though they have the little trigger safety that's in the center, uh, those can be inadvertently hit. And it's really important with a striker fire pistol to make sure that you're wearing a holster when you conceal carry. The slide is 6.35 inches in length. It's 4.8 inches in height. And again, the width is a mere 0.94 inches. The only thing you have hanging out is your slide stop. So everything else is really thin, and even it is not bad. It rides pretty close to the frame, but yet it's easy to get a hold of.
Now, according to the Bursa website, the pistol should weigh 21 and a half ounces, but I found that it was a little less than that at 20.9 ounces. Of course, eight and one in the magazine, and then an extra eight rounds for a backup. That'll give you plenty of rounds for a concealed carry option. These are rated for plus P use, so any of the defensive ammo out there, you can use it safely in this gun. That's a good thing they give you an extra magazine because spare magazines are just under $40 at $39.22. So still, for concealed carry, having a couple extra magazines wouldn't hurt, especially if you're going to run this gun as much as you will because this is a fun gun to shoot at the range. We're going to break down the pistol, so we're going to remove our magazine. Go ahead and make sure the gun again is unloaded. Right here is your slide stop. And back here, the little pin where it comes through, you're going to bring these two hash marks on the slide and the frame together and then reach back and just push that pin out. And then your slide stop comes right out. Now I found that I needed to insert my magazine to release the slide. Here we have our guide rod. This is a metal guide rod with the flat spring. And during the range time, I think this has a lot to do with the recoil management of this gun. It really shot well. Now the barrel is 3.3 inches. Uh, it is micro has a micro polished ramp and it has very sharp and deep rifling. And it is of course a modified Browning linkless design. The inside of the slide is fairly well finished. Of course I've shot this. I've shot about 200 rounds through this pistol so there's going to be a little bit of just wear but otherwise it has a very nice finish to it. Here the frame of course typical polymer striker fired frame. I will say that it does have nice slide rails here in the frame. They're a little bit extended. Here we have it and then it extends on back and then here at the rear. Of course reassembly, insert your barrel. Make sure that this little split in the guide rod is facing outward. One thing that I found too is if I don't get the guide rod in just right, if it's over to the side, sometimes I have trouble reassembling. So just make sure that your guide rod's lined up correctly. Uh, also about the guide rod, there is a dual spring system in here. It has the flat and it also has a standard spring inside the flat spring. And that dual spring system is going to help with your recoil management. Of course, slide over, line up those two notches, insert your pin, ready to go. Insert the magazine, test for function. It does come with a hard plastic box with Bursa on the front, uh, just some standard foam. You get an owner's manual and a small catalog, the external lock, one extra magazine, and you get a spent shell fired at the factory. The box is not all that great, but I'd much rather save the money on the pistol than this box that I'm not going to keep it in anyway. At the range, we had zero malfunctions, no failures to feed, nothing. It just shot and shot. The only one issue that I did find was that the slide wouldn't hang back after the last round was fired. Uh, a number of times, right at first. But then, toward the end of the shooting sequences, it started staying back. So I don't know if there was a burr or something that was getting in the way, but after we continued to shoot, it started staying back every time. The BP-9 is very similar in size to the uh, Smith & Wesson Shield, uh, as far as comparability. It's about the same size. Uh, price is a little different. The uh, MSRP on the black version is $429, and on the dual tone versions is $440. Uh, at Bud's Gun Shop, I found the black version at $365 shipped, which is a great price. Uh, the dual tone versions were $372 shipped. Bud's is usually a really good place to find out if your prices are in line. They have really good prices. Uh, the Smith & Wesson Shield ran about $400, so it's not a huge difference. But I think if you ever get a hold of one of these, it's going to be a tough decision. The Bursa BP-9 concealed carry model. I think this is an excellent choice for concealed carry. It's thin, even for home defense. It shoots like a full-size gun, yet it's really thin enough to carry comfortably all day long. And I have a lot of viewers from Argentina, and I want to say thanks for watching. Buenos dias. Muy excelente. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
remove the magazine. For me, I hate these. Now it does have a trigger safety, which if it's, <laughs> you've got to really mean to hit that. <laughs> yeah, obviously it comes out fast. A, a chrome, and it does come with a duo tone, and it does seven in one with 45. And God bless Argentina because they put out some really cool firearms.